Howdy. My name is Nonat, and no, you did not read that title wrong, and no, it is not clickbait. Right now, there are two brand new classes you can play as in Pathfinder 2e. If you've been following my channel over the past year at all, you have definitely heard the name Sinclair's Library, and that is the two brand new books me and my team are putting out for Pathfinder 2nd Edition and D&D 5th Edition, the Codex and the Almanac. Over the last couple of months, we've been releasing playtest packages, and as of about a week and a half ago, we have dropped the playtest package, including our second playable class, the Thanator. A few weeks prior to that, we also dropped the playtest for our Shaman class, both of these completely playable right now on Sinclair'sLibrary.com. And I wanted to make this video telling you about these two classes. You can see by the length of this video, this is not a deep dive. I'm not going to be going over every little intricate thing these classes do, but I wanted to tell you about them, explain their core game identity, and also let you know, using the link in the description, you can go check them out and pre-order the two books from Sinclair's library right now. But also real quick, if you happen to be watching this less than a few hours after this video goes up, I'm actually live over on Twitch right now. We debuted our Twitch streams last week and it was so freaking fun. There was so much support. People were having a blast. And today we're playing some Monster Hunter World, starting a fresh file. And it would mean a ton if you came over and hung out in the chat with us. It's sure to be a freaking awesome stream. Just keep in mind, it is an 18 plus environment. So please keep that in mind if you choose to come over. Thank you. Enjoy the video. Where some find power in books, the divine, or even a performance, you draw your power from the primal forces of life through a shamanic emblem. The shaman is a combat caster. It is also a constitution-based caster. Their key ability score is constitution, and they are going to be casting spells with their constitution modifier, meaning even though they still only have a base of 8 plus con hit points, they are going to be on average much more durable and able to take a hit compared to other spell casters. And the Shaman really does want to get up into the fray, along with a lot of its abilities sort of having shorter ranges, you know, maybe a 20 or 30 foot emanation for some of their effects. They are trained in martial weapons and light armor, meaning they have great options for getting in the thick of the fight, almost like a war priest, while using their own spells, using primal spell list and other shamanic abilities. Those particular shamanic abilities have a heavy emphasis on using your own personal vitality. This is not necessarily blood magic, however it is able to be flavored based on the person playing the shaman. You utilize vitality, whatever that means to your character, to fuel your vitamancy abilities. These are abilities you'll gain from feats, your subclass, but all shaman have the vital heal ability. By spending some of your own hit points, you can grant an ally within 20 feet temporary hit points equal to three times your level. Doesn't matter what subclass you are, doesn't matter who you are, if you're a shaman, you can give an ally temporary hit points, albeit at the cost of your own. The shaman subclasses are known as emblems, and there is the emblem of war, emblem of blood, and emblem of the beast. Like most spellcasters, your subclass does choose your level 1 feat for you, and you get a unique Vitamancy action. Starting with the Emblem of War, you get the Emblem Strike feat and access to the War Cry action. You also add Bless to your spell repertoire. And yes, it is a spell repertoire, not a spell list. The Shaman is a spontaneous primal caster. The Emblem of War Shaman wants to be in the thick of the fight, and War Cry is made for that. As a free action, if you spend your Vitamancy cost, which is a number of hit points equal to triple your level, then you and all allies within 20 feet of you get plus three to all damage rolls, resistance to physical damage equal to half your level, and a plus two status bonus to athletics checks. Your characters are hitting harder, they're taking a little bit less damage, just remember, you're sacrificing hit points for it. But if that shaman is in the thick of it next to the fighter, the monk, and the barbarian, and you war cry and they all land their hits, who boy that's gonna pop off. The Emblem of Blood is much more for a Shaman who wants to hang back and utilize their life essence to debilitate their opponents from afar. They do get the Blood Dart Shaman feat, Grim Tendril as a spell in their spell repertoire, and the Blood Manipulation Vitamancy action. 
As a free action, by paying your Vitamancy cost, you just make target creature, enfeebled one, or clumsy one, until the beginning of your next turn. Period. Full stop. There is no saving throw. You are manipulating the blood within a creature to make it harder for them to control their own body. It's only clumsy one, but it will never fail. The only limiting factor to this is that creatures must be able to bleed and have blood. If they are immune to bleed effects, you can't manipulate their blood because you need blood to manipulate. There's a joke in there somewhere, but I'm not funny enough to make it. And finally, the really thick and complicated subclass for those of you who want a crazily customizable character is the Emblem of the Beast. This subclass gets the Empower Beast action and the Primal Bonding Shaman feat, as well as the Magic Fang spell. Empower Beast is a Vitamancy action that, as a free action, if your bonded beast is within 20 feet of you, you can give it plus one to attack rolls and a five foot speed bonus for the turn. What is a bonded beast? Oh, I'm gonna go into a lot more detail about that when the full class releases, but basically, this is not an animal companion. This is not an Eidolon. This is a new type of companion that mimics or becomes existing beast monsters of up to a certain level. All Emblem of the Beast will start with a beast essence creature to fight alongside them with the minion trait, and as your spell level increases at levels 3, 5, 7, 9, etc., the maximum creature level of your targeted bonded beast can become. And even cooler, you sacrifice something to bond with them. You can see, if you have access to third level spells, you can take any second level beast creature in the game, up to GM's discretion, and make that your bonded beast. However, your maximum hit points are permanently reduced by 12 until you let your beast go or it dies. The Shaman as a whole we've designed to be focused on combat and nature and mixing those two in the best way possible. Manipulating the blood of creatures, boiling the blood of your allies to get them to fight, or literally connecting yourself with others through your blood. Blood obviously being a very main motif of the Shaman, however not being that straightforward. I love that we've gone and used the term Vitamancy because it does not just mean blood. Life force, life energy, just the simple positive energy keeping living creatures alive can be considered when with regards to Vitamancy. And I think that leaves so much cool room for role-playing, for spell descriptions, and for ways you, the player, can describe the actions of your shaman. Well, all right, we've got a spellcaster. What's next? Well, of course, we gotta give you a martial class too. The Thanator, the thing that people have been thirsting for and wanting information on for months since I leaked it way back when. The Thanator is the constitution based martial class. Also the only other class to get 12 plus con mod in hit points. Meaning if you start at 18 constitution, the Thanator will have the highest hit points of any class in the game. And they're gonna need them because while their saving throws are pretty good, they only get trained in light armor. No medium, no heavy. Even the Barbarian gets medium armor. The Thanator takes the reckless attacking of a Barbarian and takes it up to the next level because the Thanator is able to, and sometimes, wants to take a hit in combat to access their potential. This is because the Thanator's main gimmick is their adrenaline flow. When a Thanator is below half of their maximum hit points, they enter their adrenaline flow, gaining a bunch of different bonuses depending on your subclass. This is a fighter who literally lives for the rush of battle to get their blood pumping, to get themselves not into an emotional rage like a barbarian, but into the pure, raw essence of life or death encounters. A Thanator doesn't have a fight or flight response. They have a fight or fight harder response. And this is represented so well in the starting reaction available to all Thanators, blood for blood. As a reaction, if a creature hits you with a melee strike or melee spell attack roll, you can spend your reaction to gain weakness 
to their attack equal to your level. So you're taking bonus damage from this attack, but in return, you get to attack back. This is a level one attack of opportunity back at someone who just hit you, but you're increasing the damage you're taking, which sounds bad, but remember you want to hit that adrenaline flow. And also, because this could easily lead to a point where a Thanator, especially at low levels, could go down relatively quickly to some unlucky crits, all Thanator start with the Die Hard General feat. Automatic, baseline, you aren't dead until dying five, because as a Thanator, you want to toe that line of near zero hit points just for that real thrill of adrenaline, but, you know, it's also no fun if playing your character just means your character dies. The Thanator subclass is all about how your character utilizes that adrenaline. That adrenaline of being low on health, being in mortal danger, what does that unlock in you? And there are four manifestations of your adrenaline. The first being the manifestation of might. If you are a might Thanator and you drop below half hit points, you not only get to start using your constitution modifier for damage instead of strength, but you also add an additional plus three damage on top of that. And this is untyped bonus damage, which is phenomenal. The only caveat, it is only for melee strikes. If you need to finish the fight fast, the manifestation of might is doing exactly that. You might see a few other things on screen, notably the Adrenaline Surge and the Undying Warrior features. Those are at higher levels, and for the sake of video length, I'm not going to be going over them here, but you can read them on screen or download the playtest using the link in the description. The Manifestation of Magic Thanator is possibly the most out-of-left-field idea people might see coming, but I think it just works so well in the overall theme of the Thanator. This is a Thanator whose Adrenaline Surge unlocks inherent magical abilities they cannot access otherwise. And on top of that, they cannot use the refocus activity. The Thanator does not know how to consciously regain this magical ability. But whenever you drop into your adrenaline flow at below half hit points, you instantly regain one focus point. And you can use this to cast one of your manifestation spells. And their starting spell is Life Surge, a two-action, one-minute sustained emanation spell that at first glance does nothing. However, whenever you take damage while sustaining this spell, allies in the area, not yourself, allies regain two hit points. This is really cool, especially if you're surrounded by like four or five enemies all jabbing you for a little bit of damage. And sure, you're bleeding out, but your allies are all getting topped off by little bits of healing out of nowhere. Stick next to the magic Thanator, you will be healed. Let daddy take the pokes from the daggers. And then at higher levels, you can even see with Adrenaline Surge, they gain fast healing. So while the Manifestation of Might is all about ending the fight as fast as possible, the Manifestation of Magic is actually the polar opposite, working on ally sustain and then at higher levels, self-sustain to stay in the fight longer. The Manifestation of Focus Thanator is exactly what it sounds like. When you enter your Adrenaline Flow, you enter a state of absolute focus, granting you a plus one status bonus to the first attack you make every single round and ignoring the flat check to strike a concealed target, all available right at level one. This is a subclass designed similarly almost to the Precision Ranger, if you've played one of those, where you're going for one massive devastating attack every single turn. And this is all perfectly represented by the Adrenaline Surge feature at higher levels, which means once you are in your Adrenaline Flow, all of your attacks gain Deadly D8, even if they didn't have the Deadly trait to begin with. So with that plus one, which you can see also increases to a plus two bonus once you have Weapon Specialization, you're just looking for that one massive critical hit, get that deadly trait, ignore concealment, and hopefully drop a target in one big hit, rather than the Manifestation of Might, who might be trying to pummel them with that bonus damage multiple times, leading to these just completely different types of gameplay. 
And finally, the fourth subclass for Thanators is the Manifestation of Alacrity, which is the culmination, the idea of entering into adrenaline flow. You just start swinging wildly and surprisingly accurately. While in Adrenaline Flow, below half your maximum HP, your multiple attack penalty is reduced to minus four or minus three with an agile weapon. This is definitely the most selfish of the Thanator subclasses as they just want to hit their target as many times as they can every single turn. Once again, represented great by the Adrenaline Surge because while in Adrenaline Surge, whenever you deal damage to a living or undead creature with a melee strike, you recover hit points equal to half your level. You unlock Adrenaline Surge right at level three, meaning right away you're getting a hit point back every single time you hit a target, as long as you're in Adrenaline Surge. It's just constant self-sustain. It's little bits here and there, but if you can hit two, sometimes three times per turn with that reduced attack penalty, that is some great self-sustain. And there you have it, the four different subclasses of the Thanator representing just a modicum of different gameplay types and identities that the one class can represent. And I really hope y'all are interested in the Thanator and the Shaman. Like I said, the playtest material is available right now. You can see feats, you can see class features, you can see so much more than I've gone over here today. And once the books officially release, you know you'll be getting the full hour long deep dive going over everything these classes can do. So for now, I just wanna say thank you again for supporting Sinclair's library. The team's been working so freaking hard and it wouldn't be possible without them. Literally would not be possible. Um, so thank you. On behalf of them, thank you. And thank you all just for enjoying it. If you wanna pre-order Sinclair's library, you can use the link in the description to take you to sinclairslibrary.com where you can download the playtest, check it out for yourself and pre-order the books. There's so much good stuff coming and we can't wait to get it in y'all's hands physically. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, no nat ones. Oh, even though I'm only a 2D picture on the screen, I still did my salute. I want to be better. <laughs>